So, uh, hi, I'm Gregor Stewart, um, VP of Product Management for um, Basis Technology, um, and we're privileged to be able to, to be a provider of some of the technology that um, Bobak was talking to you um, about uh, this evening. Um, and um, uh, we're going to take uh, a little bit further. So, once you've got the entities, Bobak was talking about uh, building a graph from that. And one of the key steps to building a graph is to um, deal with this problem of ambiguity and variety, right? The number of different ways you can talk about the same entity, the number of entities that have very similar names and need to be differentiated, um, how you go about doing that. Um, and we have a technology which we call entity resolution, um, which we, uh, uh, I guess we developed over the past couple of years, um, you know, using a grant from the uh, CIA. And um, it works pretty well. Uh, and um, I want to kind of walk you through it. So this is a very definitely a marketing slide, right? Because you can see um, that dif d distinguishing these two President Bushes, right, um, would be almost impossible, right, uh, for a machine because there's no, um, there's no real context to tell you that uh, you know how different they are, right? Like, so for example, the first President Bush, you might say, okay, I guess I could take first President Bush. That might be, you know, an entity, and then I might go look, um, you know, in my knowledge base and so on, and find some some notion of first, etc. But not usually spoken about in that way. Um, but uh, so very definitely a very difficult case to do to do this, but. Um, the evaluation sets are full of cases like this, which are just designed to trip the algorithms up. But um, you know, the idea that, that uh, what the system is doing is taking these two um, uh, same strings and trying to say, well, one is you know, George and one is his father, right? Um, the other thing it can do is uh, when you don't have things in uh, an external knowledge base that you can link things to, it can still say, um, oh, uh, I've, never, I've never seen this name before, um, but I think it's a, the name of something, right? So it's not just a, a random word in the sentence. I think it's a name of something. It's an individual entity. And I might see it again later, right? So you want, want to set that aside. So this unknown person, unknown organization, I know what type it is. I'm going to set it aside, keep some context for later. And then if I see something that looks like that again in a similar context, I'll say, ah, oh, this is also the same thing, right? This achieves two ends. I think Kebabak was really talking about two different things. Uh, one was. You know, co-reference resolution just generally, like inside the document and across documents, right? It's like, when is the same thing being talked about inside the document and across different documents, right? And linking achieves, essentially achieves the same task, right? Like you just say, if I can link each individual mention, then I've achieved the, the co-reference task, right? So big blue, IBM, um, within the same document, obviously talking about the same thing. Um, you wouldn't need to know the, um, uh, the, the grammatical um, structure that makes that true. You just need to link the two of them um, to the correct thing. So one is an alias for the other. Right? So it can often mean that you can do a, a task that would require more difficult grammatical understanding um, using a, a, a fairly simple thing, like looking at local context and looking at the, um, the information in the world already. So let me say a little bit about how it's actually done. So take a knowledge base, Wiki, Wikidata, Wikipedia is a really good one has lots of, it's essentially very rich in context that you can use to disambiguate entities, right? Talks about variations in the, the labels, in the names, um, and also gives you some sense of, uh, you know, what's normal, uh, what's expected, um, you know, around the entities. You project the information that you get from each of these individual entity specifications, if you like, into a space. And it's not necessarily a vector space, it can be a document space, um, you know, but it's essentially a representation, a compressed representation of the information that's uh, inherent in, in the knowledge base, right? And I guess it's roughly um, set out spatially there, right? Um, so at, uh, uh, at right is essentially yeah, the projection into that, into that space. And you can see these things that are about uh, Korea, essentially. Now, this is one of my favorite little articles. No sh not really sure it was doing in New York Magazine. It's about uh, the leader of um, uh, North Korea supposedly having his ex-girlfriend murdered because his wife didn't like her. Um, and you know, kind of thing that happens every day there, right? Um, and of course, you know, you've got lots of um, you know, names that are familiar to you, Kim Jong-un, uh, probably some that aren't, Hyun song wall right? Uh, name of the newspaper, Chosun Ilbo, and so on, right? And uh, this is just standard entity extraction on this side. Um, and in this article, it's actually fairly easy to do because it's nicely capitalized and all those other things that uh, most texts that you have to deal with and I don't have. Um, however, what you can see also is that you can see some mentions that <coughs> Are, are kind of similar just generally, right? Um, they're the same sort of uh, string. So Hyun Song Wall, Hyun, Hyun, that, those, are, those three are more similar to one another than they are to lots of other things. So we put them in these little chains or groups, right, which we think might, we might want to resolve together. So we don't necessarily go through and try and resolve every mention. We'll just group them together, and that gives us a smaller problem. We can solve it just for these groups. And if they're very similar, that doesn't actually lose as much accuracy. 
So resoles you, you can see there's all by, all by yourself, right? Um, so let's focus on just uh, four of these chains, right? And see how they map uh, to, the, um, to the space, right? So bear in mind that these little, um, uh, these little blobs are the labels or the mentions and a little bit of the context, so the words around them, right? So how is Hyun Song Wall mentioned, right? Who's mentioned just before, who's mentioned just after, what words are used, those kinds of things, right? So these little blobs contain context as well as these labels, right? So how do they cluster with the uh, things that we clustered from the knowledge base? Well, you can see that Hyun Song Walls fits quite nicely on top of an existing entity, very close anyway, right? Um, you know, Wang Jian Light Music Band, not likely to make a mistake about that one, right? There's probably only one band called that. Um, and, uh, you know, but we've got two kind of, uh, you know, dodgy ones here, right? So you've got Chosun, right, which is um, a historic or an archaic name for a part of Korea. Um, and um, it's also the name of the, the, the paper, right? So it's been incorrectly, um, you know, uh, left ambiguous between those two places. I'd say incorrectly because we know from the rest of the article um, it didn't extract Chosun Ilbo correctly, right? Because uh, NER's got some errors in it. Um, so it ended up, you know, thinking it was maybe that or maybe the other, even though you read the article, you know they mean the newspaper, right? And Ri does nowhere, does, there's no entity that's anywhere near her in that space, right? Um, so that's just because she wasn't in the knowledge base, right? Um, so there's nothing really for her to match to, but similar to sort of other people in that area, so you can at least get some sense of the context, right? And you could keep that for later to, to see what made sense, right? So. This is, what, this is what the linking system um, did with that information. It said, okay, well, the nearest thing to Hyunsung Wall was this person. Um, I couldn't find anything from Ri so uh, she's a ghost, essentially. She's a new, uh, a new entity, I think, says the system, right? And that's actually correct, too. Um, Wang Shan, like music band, got that right. That was really easy. And, uh, you know, screwed up Chosen Elbow, right? So you've got the uh, two, two um, opportunities here. One for correction, which you can do in two ways. You could say, anytime you see Shows on now it means the newspaper because I'm not dealing with text that talks about archaic parts of, you know, of, of Korea. Um, what is it? Um, or you could say in this case it was wrong, and I'd like you to take the information that you put onto that cluster and put it onto the right one, so that the next time it's more likely to link it correctly, right? And in the case of Resolve you, I've got an opportunity now. I've seen some context, right, to go off and link that entity. To, a, to either a, a new a dummy article, right, or, or something else that will allow it to be disambiguated uh, better later on. So I want to talk about this, take, take one step back and say, this, this is very general, right? This isn't just to do with text. This could be anything, right? See these three images here contain, um, you know, and link to, right, uh, Manchester United. We're not going to link to, there's no Wikipedia page for guy's arm with Manchester United tattoo on it, right? This clearly is, if it's referring at all, it's referring to Manchester United, right? So think about the sense of that text can have things in it that link to things in Wikipedia, and images can have things that link it, uh, to things in Wikipedia, right? That's linking. You can also do learning as well, right? You can say, this image, this flag, right? Before, before a certain point, it was only several years ago, right? Didn't exist. You'd never seen that before, right? Now you see it in lots of images, right? And the context that you see of, of the images that you see it in, right, are similar. So you've got guys wearing, you know, um, what is it, headdresses. You've got guys with guns. You've got guys driving around in, you know, tacticals and things like this, right? So there's there's common context there around this particular co image component, which gives it its meaning, right? And you're kind of looking, what is that? What should that link to, right? What does that mean? Obviously, now we know links to IS or ISIS or something like that, right? So this is a common technique you can use. It doesn't matter whether you're using you know, this algorithm for processing components of images or for processing components of text. You're projecting it into a space, seeing what matches, right? If nothing does, you're, you're assuming, you're, you're take, making an assumption that, oh, this is a new thing, right? You know, which I might link later. So one of the difficulties that uh, uh, Babak talked about was, you know, doing this for text, but on very short texts, right? Because there's very little um, to go on. NER itself is very difficult, and as it turns out, um, doing NER and linking at the same time makes it a little bit easier, right? Because you have a very large, um, what is it, corpus of things it might be, right? Um, and so you can check it against that, right? Uh, at the same time, you're trying to get the, um, the, the bit that's the name out of it. So essentially, you just walk through the text saying, hey, is anything up to now, you know, something in the, the database? Anything now, now, et cetera, right? Um, and then you can say, if I move them around a little bit, does that make any sense? Uh, you just do that you know, millions of times 
for each one, right? You know, and then you end up with a list of candidates which have a score, and you can say, well, I'm not really sure where they are in the text, because when you do that moving around, that permuting, you, know, you, you kind of lose the, the natural flow of the text. So it might end up linking to a particular entity at the text level, but you can't actually point to the bits of the text that you know, the name is in, right? So sometimes that's good enough, because you can say, this tweet mentions these people, where is it in the tweet? I don't know, don't care, right? It just mentions that, right? And the person can find that out. So one of the things that we've been working on for a while is um, how to do that fast, accurate. Um, so fast enough that you could take the whole fire hose uh, you know, and spit out, um, what is it, very accurate links, right? Uh, which, as you said, are, are very useful. Let me talk a little bit about uh, why they're useful. So you know, Facebook, Bang, you know, all these other guys, they're all really interested in this. Why, right? Well, because you want to disambiguate these things, right? So Tiger Woods, that's a person, right? But it might be a tiger in the woods, or it might be a wooden tiger, right? You know, and these are important things, but not for those in themselves, because nine times out of 10, someone types Tiger Woods, what they really mean is that guy that's an adulterer, right? Um, and, but it's really difficult when you're talking about, you know, things like Syria interactions with France that seem really important to this month, right? You know, these are, these are more complex things, and it would be really useful if you could at least link the things that the, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the query is talking about, right? Um, so, in some sense, there are simple queries which are helped by disambiguation. Every time you go do a search now, you get some hits back from the graph. Um, and every time you hover over something in that entity card at, at the right or click on something, you're giving them some information about what these words mean, what they should present you next, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's kind of inherent feedback. Whew. This just stopped working. I guess they turn the power off after a certain point, I'm trying to tell us to go. Projector cooling down. Cooling down. <laughs> it was overheating. Oh, it was? That's the first time I've ever noticed. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So what does it what does it do for you, right? Let's because you know the, the the images are pretty easy, right? So what does it actually do for you? What sorts of things can you do once you have a link to a knowledge base, right? Well, um, knowledge base is very rich in information that may not be in the text, right? So for example, it doesn't matter how much you do NLP on a text that just mentions something about the Steve Jobs movie, right? You're never going to know when Steve Jobs was born from that, right? You're never gonna know when he died from that because the information isn't in the text, right? However, you can bet your boots, it's in the knowledge base, it's in Wikidata, right? So if you can link the two things, you can say, hey, what's Steve Jobs' birth date? Back, right? And you're good to go, right? Another thing that people often ask for, and this is a sort of special cases, right, um, are topics, right? What's the topic of this text, right? You could say, well, it's about these entities, but typically that's not, um, you know, that's not so satisfying, right? What you want to do is to say, take all the entities, right, and then look at the concepts that they're linked to, right? Now, in a graph, right, like Wikidata is an impl implicit graph, all of these things are, are represented, right? So you could say, um, you know, Obama is a president, right? Uh, president is part of a U.S. government, et cetera, right? So if you have lots of U.S. government actors mentioned um, in, a, in, a, in an article, when you link them to the knowledge base and you see what's common, right, what, are they, what links them, right, those are the concepts which are represented in this article, right? So there's a little bit of abstraction. And the good thing about that is, you know, many unsupervised, even supervised algorithms for topic extraction or um, what is it, uh, um, topic modeling, right? Give you either collections of words which represent the topics in the document, right? They're not human labels, right? They're just like collections of words or kind of bad selections from that set of words that are supposed to represent the topics, right? Now, the topics in the graph are all human curated, right? You know, they're, they're human readable labels, right? So if you can do that, project out into the uh, graph, you know, find what's common, you can get pretty good concept labels for, for documents, right? Um, and that's just by walking a graph, essentially, right? Once you've got a link. And then also think about norms, right? So each entity in a, uh, in a, in a graph, right, has an environment um, and say you say, take five hops, right? So, right through the graph. And you do that thousands of times. You say, no, don't hop any more than five times, but do it a thousand times. And then say, what's common, right, to that group? What's the most likely thing you're gonna land on, right? You know, when you do that thousand random walks that are five, five hops long, right? 
that, that you might call that the norm of that entity, right? The kinds of things that get mentioned and the concepts that get mentioned and so on are the norm for that entity. Now, if you find entities other than those entities in a document, along with this one that you've, you've linked, well, that might be an interesting document, right? So for example, if it's uh, you know, prior to us knowing he was an adulterer, for example, the only thing you'd ever see Tiger Woods uh, mentioned alongside was you know, golf, Nike, boring, etc. right? Those are the kinds of things you would see. And then, you know, suddenly the day after, right, you know, he's, he's an adulterer excitement, right? Because that's an article you want to read, right? It's no longer about, it's no longer about, um, what is it, our friend um, Tiger Woods, you know, whose dad forced him to play golf and all that kind of thing. It's now about, um, you know, this guy who's an adulterer. So um, that article, the first thing that mentioned him said that, right? That's an article you might want to read, to read, right? So that would be an anomalous article by this, right? So just by walking the graph randomly, you can pick up these things like norms so that when you come to look at um, you know, documents through the, the, the entities that are linked, if you don't find those um, or you find something new that's outside that set, um, that might be a more interesting document. So that's one other thing you might get from just linking these entities, right? So it's all about enrichment though, right? So um, we, have, we have JVM modules for these things. Um, what is it? And we have um, an API that's coming along that lets uh, you test those things. And hopefully, um, um, you know, Babak will be one of, the, one of the guys that tests it. So, um, and if you, uh, you want to get in touch, uh, there's my email. I'm, I'm not an adulterer, so. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, curation of knowledge bases is a difficult task, right? Um, and again, you, you're really trying to you're trying to capture two kinds of information, stuff that's going to help you disambiguate, stuff that's going to help you pick out that entity, even though it has entities that are like it and entities that have the same sorts of labels, right? And information that's useful, right? Um, and, uh, and also more, more sort of computed stuff, right? Like this stuff that we, you talked about. Now, you talked also in your um, presentation about how that, the possibilities there are just you know, staggering, right? There's, even if you just fully connected the graph, there are so many edges, right? It's crazy. So um, I think the primary difficulty is going to be um, how to prune it, right? Like what, what not to keep. And if you think about, um, you know, a, a very natural way of talking about memory, human memory is, oh, it's remembering things, right? It's storing things. But actually, human memory is all about throwing things away, right? It's about losing things. It's about, you know, cut, um, what is it, cutting things down or compressing them, right? So I think what people uh, often do when they build knowledge bases is they, um, they try to be, um, you know, maximalist, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh, I've got all these, you know, headings for things I'm going to put into every entity, and then it turns out, you know, you better be schemalist because half of it's never going to get filled in, right? Um, so that's the that, that's the kind of underlying intuition. I think from our perspective, um, allowing, uh, giving customers the power to build these custom knowledge bases and to um, build linkers, um, you know, from them um, is is tricky, right? Because it's like it's like selling. Um, uh, you know, uh, a, a car that you can easily kill yourself with, right? You know, so customers can get very dissatisfied, right? Because it, it does actually demand quite a bit of discipline, quite a bit of effort, right? Um, uh, but I think the results sort of, um, you know, some of the things I've talked about, you know, can be, can be very useful, right? So that's ultimately the difficulty for us is educating customers as to how to do this work, right? Um, and a lot of the time, you're busy doing other things, so it's, it's difficult, right? Is that satisfying? Um, you know, I don't have any strong opinions about graph databases. Uh, what is it? The last one that we we done experiments was Neo4j, right? Um, I, I would say that was a fairly uncontroversial um, recommendation if there was one. Certainly, the easiest one to start with, right? Um, and um, I think that uh, the, I guess the more, what would you call it? Um, the trickier question is, what do you? 
do you know how to query graph databases, right? You know, in a way that's efficient, right? Um, and it's a bit like, I remember I was talking to Shai, um, the Elasticsearch um, founder, um, you know, a couple months ago, and he was saying, we're just, not, we're just not building things that allow people to do things that are slow, right? And a bit like Swift, right? The design of the language is such that you really you can't do things that make it slow down, right? Um, that's the idea, right? Um, and I think that uh, graph databases, you know, give you all this power, right, and give you the powers to do things that are really slow, right. So ultimately, that's one of the one of the tricky parts, right, is to learn how to do um, efficient queries. I, I think we were talking earlier when Babak and I were were, were um, discussing this um, about flattening a lot of the information that you would do, get from a query. So do a query offline, you know, build something like that norm, and then store it in an intermediate like a cache or or you know or, or the knowledge base itself for easy retrieval, right. Um, so I think the, the which, no, which um, graph database, I'm agnostic, um, what is it? the use of them is very important and typically this um, offline use and, and, and keeping in a flat form is what makes stuff performant. Right? Okay. All right, any others?